820 Biscayne is as close to Miami as you can get. So I figured, hey, why not start here? It's as good a place as any. And it inspired our Flamingo Embarkation Day shirts. Hey, everybody. Hank Without a Room Travels here. And welcome to the beautiful Carnival Celebration. If you've hung out at the channel long enough, you know that I always bring you guys along with me on my cruises. And we start with our typical tour of the ship. So the heart of this ship is deck eight, and luckily we're on 10, so just a couple of stairwells away. Getting my exercise in, my sister says, you need to exercise more, Hank. So let's start here on deck eight, explore all the public spaces, and then head to the top deck where they've got the water slides, mini golf, basketball courts, and of course, Bolt, the first roller coaster at sea. So let's head on out, and please feel free to leave me your comments below. All right, let's go, come on. So Biscayne 820 is just one out of six unique zones aboard the ship, and it's actually an homage to Carnival's original address from back in 1972. Here's Bar 820, Miami Slice, where you can get your pizza until 4 a.m., if you can imagine that. Off to this side, you've got Deco Deli, with everything from Cuban and croqueta sandwiches to pan con lechon. Yum! I've got to say, my first impression of the ship was it's super stylish and trendy, really, really modern. So inside 820 Biscayne, you've also got the Cucina del Capitano, the Italian restaurant, and it is complimentary the first time you visit. So it features recipes and photography throughout the restaurant by the Italian captains and officers of Carnival Cruise Line. I thought that was a really nice touch. Here's a minestrone soup I had for dinner one night along with appetizers like meatballs and a caprese salad, carbonara style pasta, and of course the old classic chicken parmesan. And for dessert we had the apple crostata, kind of apple pie a la mode, and of course the tiramisu which was phenomenal. There's some of the photography I mentioned earlier. In the 820 Biscayne Zone, you've also got Rudy's Sea Grill, which debuted on Mardi Gras. It is Rudy Sodoman's creation, and he's the master chef at Holland America Line. He's also working with Princess Cruise Line at the moment as well. All Carnival brands. As we continue walking aft, you've got Carnival Adventures, which is your shore excursions desk. I always tell folks to book early in the app. Not only do you get a discount, but this way you guarantee your excursion won't get sold out. A little further down, we've got the guest services desk. I did visit a couple of times because my AC wasn't working. Everyone's super friendly and they got on it right away, thank goodness. Let's head into Summer Landing, which is at the back of the ship. First thing you see here on your left is the Carnival Store. So much cool merch in this little shop. Everything from jackets to t-shirts, hats. Oh, and I did want to buy that I Conquered Bold shirt. They just didn't have it in my size, unfortunately. I did pick up one of these though. And for you Disney fans, no mini ears, but you can get a whale tail funnel headband. See how much cool stuff? And decently priced too. Directly across from that store, you've got Guy's Smokehouse Brew House, where they do brew four types of craft beers right aboard the ship. Super nice space, great chill vibe. They have live bands that perform at the back of the restaurant, and the barbecue is sensational, I've got to say. As you can see, they've got plenty of seating space. There's the little stage. And they've got gaming tables as well. Off to the side, you've got the Heroes Tribute Lounge, which not only includes ice cream, but tons of memorabilia from all the different branches of the military. It's a really cool space. So let's head outside and you're gonna come across one of several pools aboard the ship. This one happens to be an infinity pool at the back of the ship. What a view, huh? There you go. Let's bring it back inside to Celebration Central, which is kind of the primary zone. This is 
for all intents and purposes, the ship's atrium, and it does take up three decks. Huge performance space right at the center of the ship, on the starboard side. Continuing with our Deck 8 tour, we've got Bonsai Sushi, which is one of the Japanese offerings on board, and it is a la carte, so kind of like a restaurant, very decently priced poke bowls and sushi rolls at this venue. You don't need a reservation, you can walk up and they will seat you. And off to this side, you've got Bonsai Teppanyaki, which is their hibachi offering. You're definitely going to want to make a reservation for this one. As you see, there's only three tables, so it's going to get pretty packed. And at $38 per person, not bad at all. We started with these appetizers. There's your edamame, pork belly, and of course a salad. And then the real show started. These guys were not only phenomenal cooks, but so entertaining. The three of them would sing together in unison and had the crowd just singing along. Oh my gosh, that's making me so hungry. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go out for hibachi. And then we got this little bento box that had all these treats for dessert. See how much food? Definitely worth the price we pay. We left so happy and satisfied. And from Japanese, let's switch over to Chinese slash Mexican with shebang. This, like the Cocina del Capitano, is complimentary the first time you visit and then they do charge $8 if you decide to come back. This restaurant debuted aboard sister ship Mardi Gras and was a huge hit, so they've brought it back. We didn't have a chance to try the Mexican, hopefully next time. But here's our egg drop soup with spring rolls. That was the dumplings. They had shrimp, so I couldn't eat those. And Kung Pao chicken with noodles. For dessert, I had the coconut tres leches, which was actually pretty good. One of the really neat spaces was the Havana bar. With our Cuban background, you know, we felt right at home here among the mojitos and Cuba Libres. Really colorful and nice space. And the bands that performed here were actually really, really good. Phenomenal musicians. Actually, the only time we avoided Havana Bar is on karaoke nights. We could just hear the howling from outside and would decide to just keep on walking. But really fun venue. See how pretty that is? And you've got your domino table right here. The bar is connected to the Havana staterooms, which is a unique category of stateroom and it gives you access to a little pool in an outside bar area as well. These staterooms take up the majority of the forward part of the ship, along with the Grand Spectrum Theater. And there you go, nice segue. This is the Amor Latino show, kind of keeping it with that Cuban vibe. I will say that for 6,000 plus guests, this theater is a little on the small side. Great state-of-the-art sound, lighting and effects and everything. But yeah, there were always lines to get in and you might not even get in on some nights. The performances we caught at the Grand Spectrum Theater were definitely a lot of fun. But I think the bigger productions take place at center stage. And there's much more room for guests in that midship area. Unfortunately, Carnival does not allow filming inside the casino, but it is absolutely massive. It takes up a huge chunk of Deck 7. Half is smoking, the other half non-smoking. Just outside the Empress Casino, we've got the Aquaria Bar. Beautiful little bar with motifs from the original Carnival Victory. And I did have my favorite cocktail of the entire cruise at the Aquaria Bar. Check out the upcoming vlog for that. See what a perfect view of center stage? It's a great place to catch a show. So let's keep heading aft and you're gonna pass a few shops. Yes, these are your duty-free shops. There's the liquor store. And scattered throughout the walls, you've got some gorgeous artwork. Limelight Lounge hosted several comedians, but the lines were always just crazy to get in. And over here, you've got the Alchemy Bar where the mixologists wear white lab coats. It's really a cool theme, and they've got some very unique cocktails as well. 
Here's a quick peek at the gateway from deck seven, but we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Now we're at Fahrenheit 555, which is the specialty dining steakhouse. It's got its own little bar here in the front where you can grab a drink while you wait to be seated. Let's take a quick spin around the restaurant. We didn't have a chance to dine here, but I hear that it is fantastic. And finally, let's check out Festival Restaurant, one of two main dining restaurants that are all the way aft, you know, the back of the ship. So here we are on deck seven. This restaurant is used for your time dining, where guests check into the app, show up at the restaurant and wait to be seated. It gives you that freedom to dine at whatever time you like. Down here is deck six. And so we'll start our tour of Deck 6 right here at the Festival Restaurant. With so many dining options, we just didn't eat very many dinners at Festival Restaurant at all. We did have some nice sit-down breakfasts, though, instead of rushing to the buffet. Here is the second main dining restaurant, Carnival Restaurant, and that one is used for your traditional main and second dining times. The only time my sister and I visited this restaurant was for our Cat in the Hat brunch, which you will see in the vlog coming up. Just outside the Carnival restaurant, you've got the Golden Jubilee Promenade, which celebrates 50 years of Carnival's funships. And you see those portals? Each one represents a decade in the line's history. And check out the gorgeous ship model. I love these so much. Off on this side, you've got the Golden Jubilee Lounge. Really intimate, nice little space. They also have performances here as well. This bar really is a tribute to Carnival's 50 years of fun ships. You can see the ship blueprints there at the top. And I hear there are QR codes hidden in there that you can scan and get the history of some of those ships that are no longer part of the fleet. Let's continue exploring the gateway. We're gonna head on over to the other side now. And as you enter the gateway, you're gonna notice 20 LED windows and a 100 foot LED ceiling. It really transforms throughout the cruise. It's never the same experience. So you've got Latitudes Bar with the Flipboard technology, like at the old school train stations, and the cities match the windows. Here you've got Emerald's Bistro, 1397, which happens to be Celebration's hull number at the shipyard. How cool is that? And then the Carnival Kitchen, where you've got nine stations, so it holds about 18 guests, cook and then dine on your creations. Here you've got a few more stores. Here's the rolls at the entrance to the gateway, which sat inside Carnival Ecstasy for decades. Cherry on top is your candy shop. It is an additional charge. And Java Blue Cafe is where you would come for your morning coffee. So you've got your complimentary section and you can also order cappuccinos, lattes, that kind of thing for a nominal fee. Right there you can pick up some complimentary snacks and pastelitos and things. They also sell bottled waters and juices and sodas for folks without the drink package. Oh yeah, I had to pick up one of these been there mugs, which I collect. Across from Java Blue Cafe, you've got the Tropical Bar, another homage to the cruise line's history. The Tropical was the first ship in the fleet that featured their signature funnel. And you've got a great view of center stage from that little bar as well. Okay, let's wrap up our tour of Deck 6, visiting a few more venues, then we'll head upstairs and hit the Lido Deck. Off on this side, you've got Punchliner Comedy Club, which again, like Limelight, was a little small and the lines were just insane. We didn't get to catch any comedians on our trip. Across from there, you've got Piano Bar 88, which unfortunately was always closed at the time I filmed. Another venue we didn't quite get into. 
Then you've got the entrance to Cloud9 Spa, which is on deck 6. The treatment rooms are all downstairs on deck 5. But this is where you check in for your appointment, then they take you downstairs to deck 5. Across from that, you've got the gym, which is actually a nice sized gym. Not sure about for 6,000 plus guests, but all state of the art machines. My sister did enjoy the gym throughout our cruise. Finally, downstairs, you did have the kids' spaces, which I didn't have access to. All right, let's head on upstairs. Welcome to the Lido deck, and here's your main pool. Off to this side, you've got Red Frog Tiggy Bar. Really nice little bar where you can get all your frozen drinks, and they've got 52 different rums from all around the world, which I thought was pretty cool. Yes, we enjoyed a few cocktails at Red Frog. And it is two stories high, as is the Lido deck. So here you're looking at the second deck. Here's the towel hut and a nice shot of the main pool. Street Eats is your food truck inspired dining. And though the seafood shack is a la carte pricing, the others are complimentary. So you've got some fried foods, steamed foods, and grilled foods there. Blue Iguana is completely complimentary. That's where you're gonna come for your custom burritos and tacos. It was so nice, we dined there twice. Let's head into the traditional buffet, which is the Lido Marketplace. There you've got your sinks to wash your hands. It's a really bright and clean area. Check out those views. Again, with so many food options, we just didn't visit the buffet often, but the times that we did go there was perfectly fine. There are your coffee machines. You've got juice and sodas on this side. And another pool on deck 16. Off to one side, you've got Tide's Bar, where you can pick up a cocktail or even a canned soda to go with your big chicken sandwich. And there are the soft serve ice cream machines. Here it is, big chicken. Definitely a highlight of this trip. So Shaq's Big Chicken from the breakfast biscuits to tenders to chicken sandwiches, everything was delightful. I can't complain about Guy's Burger Joint either. The burgers were fantastic. Kind of reminded me of the burgers you get at Steak and Shake. Yeah, that type of burger. And the toppings, delicious. Let's wrap up this tour at the Ultimate Playground, which features not just miniature golf, but Three amazing water slides, basketball courts, a rope course, and Bolt, the first roller coaster at sea. Check out the water slides, you've got three of them. And a splash zone for the little ones. Then over on this side, you've got the entrance to Bolt. There's the car, and you can weigh yourself and make sure you're of the right height. And there it is. $15 per person for two laps around, and it was a thrill. An absolute highlight of this cruise. There's the rope course, which my sister did do, and you will see that and Bolt as part of our vlog coming up. Overall, we had a lovely time aboard Carnival Celebration, and I cannot wait to share all of that with you guys in the upcoming vlog. So please, subscribe if you haven't, and keep an eye out for that. It's coming up soon. And that does it for another awesome ship tour with me, Hank, at Outer Room Travels. I hope you enjoyed touring Carnival Celebration with me. She's an absolutely beautiful ship. If you've got any questions at all, please, please feel free to reach out. That's what I'm here for. Travel advisors are not just about getting you booked. Anyone can do that. You can go online very simply, you know, and book your own cruise vacation with any cruise line. It's more about kind of navigating the ins and outs of dining, the shows, how far is the pier terminal. You know, having a pal on your side is going to help make the best vacation plan for you. So, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and have an out-of-this-world day. Take care, everybody.